Hey everybody, I'm Mama Beard and welcome back to my channel. Today I happen to have a case of ripe bananas and I'm going to be showing you guys what I plan to do on preserving all of these bananas so nothing goes to waste. I'm Carolina and I live in Montana. I do a lot of food bank hauls, food preserving, canning, and a little bit of homesteading on my channel. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. I would love to have you a part of my family. All right, so my plan for tackling these bananas is I am going to freeze some for smoothies. I'm going to be dehydrating some. I have a magic mill here. This is my dehydrator that I bought. I've used it to do some leeks and some herbs and stuff, but I have not done it for any kind of fruit yet. So it'd be a good test for this one. I can link this down in my shop below if you're interested. It was the most reasonably priced one that had vents in the back. And then I have a nine tray Excalibur here. That is not mine. I know, I wish it was. But this is actually a good friend of mine. I got these case of bananas and I'm like, you know, I need to shoot Courtney a message. So Courtney, let me borrow her Excalibur and I'm going to reward her by giving her some of my banana chips. So I'm gonna be using both of them at the same time just to try and knock out these bananas. And then if there's any left or if there's some that are just super smushy and just ready to go for like banana bread and stuff, I'm just gonna have those mashed up and portion them and then put them in the freezer already mashed and portioned, ready to go for whatever kind of recipe I need for them. So that's kind of my plan on how I'm gonna tackle this. I am also going to keep the banana peels. I'm going to dehydrate them and we're going to grind them up and I'm gonna save them for my garden next year. There's a lot of potassium, not only in the bananas, but in the peels as well that my garden's really gonna benefit from. So let's get in close and I'll show you what to do. First thing I'm going to do is just wash these trays really good. I borrowed this from a friend, so I wanna make sure that this is nice and clean and everything is nice and sanitized for my project. And then I'm going to do the same thing whenever I'm done and make sure I return it to her nice and clean and hopefully in better condition than I got it just because that's what I like to do when I borrow a piece of equipment from a friend. So I have some lemon juice here that I'm going to put in my little bowl and we're going to coat the banana slices in lemon juice. Coating these in lemon juice here is going to keep them from oxidizing which is what happens and they turn brown. Jeez, I need to sharpen my knife. Can we really cut some tape here? Whenever feeling, yeah, my knife's super dull. Whenever you're feeling to see if your knife is sharp, I just take my finger and run it along the blade and you should be able to feel that sharpness. Like here, I don't feel any sharpness at all. You're going to hold it at an angle and just pull it towards you. This is how I like to sharpen. One person actually said this is honing your knife if you want to be technical. Make sure you have a firm grip so you don't the knife doesn't slip. I have a firm grip on my steel and I'm just going nice and slow making sure I'm holding my knife at an angle because you're actually scraping some of the steel off is how you get that sharpened. And then I can feel that is way more sharpened. So I'll wipe it. I mean, I know it's just cutting bananas, but no matter what it is, you want to make sure you got a knife, nice sharp knife. Now these harder pieces right here are not really going to dehydrate very well. So, and last time I blended this up, it, these got stuck in my blender really bad. I had to have a husband disassemble it, and he was grumbly. So. We're just gonna keep those out. Same thing with these ends. These aren't, we'll just keep those. Okay, the bananas, the outside look pretty brown, but these really aren't too bad. Definitely savable. See, this one got a little, is a little brown there. So I'm gonna get another bowl. All right, so if it's a little brown like that one, I'm gonna rip that off and that's gonna go in my mashed bananas for the freezer. I'm gonna get my tray out, get 
get it ready to go. You want to make sure they're roughly the same thickness. Kind of see what I'm shooting for. Put them into the lemon juice. We're just coating them, check off the excess, and line them up. You want to make sure you have leave some space so the airflow can get all around the banana. Now, if you don't want lemon juice, because sometimes people can taste the lemon juice on them, it's kind of tart, then you can use orange juice or pineapple juice as well. All of that has the chemical in it that keeps browning from happening. So don't be afraid to switch that up or don't go buy lemon juice if you have a can of pineapple. Just open it up, eat the pineapple, and save the juice. Or you dehydrate your pineapple too. Shoot. I hear that's good, I haven't tried that. This is gonna be the first type of fruit I'm ever attempting to dehydrate, so I'm excited about it. All right, we got one tray done, so I'm just gonna keep going and I'm gonna fill them up and we'll see how many bananas we can get through. All right, I'm done with my last tray, so I'm sticking it in. A couple of things I did different is that I changed my water, or I changed the solution from just lemon juice to lemon juice and water to kind of dilute it down. That worked a lot better. Then we're just gonna put the. Sorry, right here. There we go. Lids on. So I just kind of see back here. We're just going to turn this. This one right here says fruits, 135 to 145. So we're gonna do 135. And then we're gonna let this go for six to 12 hours. All right, with the Excalibur full, this is all that I got left just for end up mashing to put in the freezer. Here's all my skins. And then I still have six bushels of bananas left. I don't have anything in my magic mill yet, so I might put more banana chips in there just to kind of see how it does them. Or I might put the peels in there. I don't know yet, let's see. Let's see what I'm gonna do. All right, so we're going to smash up, oh, that's okay. Smash up these bananas. Perfect. Are you gonna smash up these bananas? Yep. Put our blade in here, our paddle. Michael, get that banana. Okay, yeah, let's just put that one for the chickens. Is it trash? Yeah, that's fine. All right, we got the bowl in here. Can you lock it? Lock it? Yeah. It turned on? Yeah. Well, that just makes it lock so the top can't come up and down. So, like, up here? Yep, pull it towards you. Yep, yeah. so now I can't lift this up. Okay. And now you move this to number two. Okay. Gently. Whoa, good. Hey, is it number two? Perfect. That's number two. Well, that says stir, that's okay. 
Why are you so stuck? Because it's not quite number two. But that's all right. Look at that mashing. It's number one. Number one. <laughs> I got the two. Two. Okay, go ahead. Whoa. Uh, all right, no more. Someone... That's good. Oh, there's gonna be six. No, do not turn it to six. Turn it off. All right, there you go. You gotta push it. Is that working? There we oh, go. Okay, okay. All right, perfect. Lift this up. Lift it up. Yeah. Use your muscle. Catboy strength. Oh yeah, that looks great. <laughs> so mash the banana. I, what are you doing? Let's at least take it away from the bananas before you do that. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> That's banana-y. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> okay. For the bananas for the freezer, I have these Ziploc bags, which aren't ideal. Freezer would be better, but it's what I have right now. So I'm just going to write, I'm going to do two cups banana, and then the month and year. gonna kind of fold it down in on itself to get as much air out as possible there's my two cups of banana I'm gonna freeze it flat so that way it's easier to store and it's easier to thaw okay, I ended mm -hmm. up with five bags with two cups in each so perfect and these are going in the freezer all right everybody it is the next day I let this ended up going for a full 24 hours it really needed it I put my banana peels in my magic mill is what I use to dehydrate these. So these are super crunchy, ready to go. And I wanted to show you what I'm going to plan on doing with these banana chips. So we're going to take this off. And then I was just testing these to make sure they were done. So you want to make sure that they can fully snap. There's no moisture in them at all. Give them a try. Very good. So I have a quart here. And I'm just going to be taking these off and putting them in a mason jar for now. fit into one quart um now this is really my first time dehydrating guys so if you have experience with dehydrating please leave your tips and tricks below anything if you see i can do something better or if um like i'm pretty sure you need some airflow in here to be able to shake everything around so i might have to do a smaller amount in here also she's uh, my friend's like it comes with tray so if you have something sticky you can put it on there and it comes off easier and yet I don't use it. So I got some of the banana, the super thin ones kind of stuck on there. But that's okay. I got six more trays to do, so let's get to work. Guys, for my next banana recipe, I'm going to be making banana jam. And that's just equal parts bananas to sugar and some lemon juice. So I have two of my bushels here. I'm going to go for eight cups of mushed bananas for eight cups of sugar. So let's get these out and mashed. Here's those two bushels. Let's mash this up. You want to measure this when it's mashed already, not before. So get in there, smash it up, and then measure. That's pretty much exactly eight cups. All right, great. All right, so into the pot. Eight cups of banana. Eight cups of sugar. 
To every cup of bananas and sugar, you wanna add one tablespoon of lemon juice. So I'm gonna add eight tablespoons. Let's get this turned on. I know this is a lot of sugar, guys. I was almost hesitant to even make this recipe because it had so much sugar in it, but I wanted to show it to you guys and show you that this is an option for preserving, and that's what sugar is. It's a preservative. It makes it so food doesn't go as bad as fast. Sugar, vinegar, things like that, those are preservatives. The goal is to get this to boil for five minutes. So we're just gonna keep stirring it until it comes up to a boil. Okay, the banana jam starting to get some action here. It's starting to heat up some. It's foaming a bit. It's not quite boiling yet. I've been like mashing the bananas against the side a little bit. So I'm just going to keep stirring this, wait for it to come to a rolling boil, and hopefully it won't overflow my pot, and we'll let it boil for five minutes. So I'll bring you back once we get some action. Alright, it's starting to bubble. I'm kind of watching it right here to see if I feel like it's going to bubble over my pot or not. Because I want it at a rolling boil, so it needs to have the freedom. Freedom! It has the space <laughs> to do that. So this pot may not be big enough. All right guys, I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna switch to my big blue pot. I don't like it, I don't like it. So give me a minute. All right guys, success, got it over to the big pot. So we're gonna bring this back up to a boil and boil it for five minutes. And then over here, I've got my water bath getting ready. I'm using my pressure cooker just for a water bath and I have my jars in there. Might as well get them in there sanitizing while I have it heating up and my jam boiling. So I'm gonna leave these in here, probably let them boil for about 10 minutes or so, make sure they're nice and sanitized and then they'll be ready by the time the jam is to start ladling it up. So it's not fully at a rolling boil because you could tell by when I stir it, the bubbles stop. So this doesn't start counting for our five minutes until it's at a rolling boil. I'm gonna use my emulsion blender just to zap it a little bit. Get all those bananas done. All right, now I'm gonna start my five minute timer. There's our five minute timer, so we're gonna shut this off and it's ready to get jarred up. Now that our jars are full, we're going to debubble. So this is just a citrus peeler I'm using. Just kind of get in there, move them around. Make sure you don't have any air bubbles in there. And then I got vinegar. I'm just gonna dip my paper towel in there. I'm gonna wipe the edges real good, the rims. Make sure you get any sticky residue off. That way it ensures you'll have a good seal. Put your lids, rings, fingertip tight. And now they're going in the water bath. As long as the water is at least one inch 
above the top of the jars and we are good to go. It looks like it will be, so I'm going to go ahead and crank it on high so it can start boiling. So as soon as this comes to a rolling boil, we are going to set a 10 minute timer. I'm gonna put the lid on top just to help it come up to a boil. Our banana jam is out and it's going to cool for 25 out. A bunch of them are already sealing. They are going to be cooling here for 24 hours and then we will mark them and put them on our shelf. And is that simple to make yourself some banana jam? All right, everybody, for this banana meal, I am going to be making some banana rice pudding, and this is what I'm gonna be serving everybody for breakfast today. And I just wanted to show you a quick, easy way to make it. And you can do this really with any flavor. You can make just a regular rice pudding, but I'm adding bananas to it. So you're going to need two cups of cooked rice. Now this recipe does call for white rice, but I have this brown rice, so that's what I'm using. And then two cups of milk. I have a little bit of my home canned milk I'm gonna use up and then I'll just throw some 1% in there. Like look at the difference of the milk. Can you see the color difference? This is what happened, like this was the milk it started off when I first canned it. And then this is what it looks like when it's done, been sitting on the shelf for a year now. And that's why I think it tastes more like evaporated milk. It doesn't taste exactly like the milk that you would get. It has a slight condensed flavor to it, I guess I would describe it as. So, and you can see in the color how it's slightly different. I was like, this also probably cooks some of the milk, so that color could be some of the sugar that's getting cooked in the milk. I'm not too sure, but I know it's a little different. So we're gonna use, but two types of milk, just using what I have. And then I got six tablespoons of sugar here. And then we're going to need some egg yolks. I wanted to show you guys how I separate the egg yolks. All right, so make sure her, make sure your hands are clean because you are going to be touching the food with your hands. And I'm going to have the whites in the jar and the yolk in the measuring cup because I'm just using the yolks. So you're gonna break the egg, try and get it where it's a clean break so you have like this sharp edge because that's what you're gonna use to cut the egg yolk pretty much. Here's a, now you don't wanna pop the yolk. I'm sorry, you're gonna cut the egg white with the shell. You don't wanna cut the egg yolk because if you get yolk in the egg whites, then you can't use them or they don't rise up as well. So I'm trying to get every bit of the egg yolk or the egg white off of there. See, it has a little bit there. I'm not even gonna worry about it. The egg yolk is what's gonna be thickening our pudding. So again, crack, kind of get your thumbs in there. I kind of just let it go, do it over your container, let all the white fall out so you don't make such a big mess. Watch those sharp corners on that yolk. That's why I try and find a flat side, not one that's like super sharp, because that will break your yolk. Is that that? There's two. Now, if you're not comfortable with this or say I break that and look, that's not very, that's not very big to kind of hold everything, then you can just do it with your hands as well. Put it in your hand gently. And I kind of open my fingers to let the egg white slip through. Okay, like that. And then you just have the yolk. So same thing, put in your hand. Open your fingers just a little bit to let the white through, but not the yolk. And just kind of pass it back and forth. And then that's it. And then we got our four egg yolks. And we go wash our hands. Okay, so we got our four egg yolks. 
And then our egg whites that we are going to save and use for something else. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my pan. I used this to boil water last night and I forgot to re-season it. So it was just kind of dry. So all I did was spread some bacon grease on that. And then we're gonna let this heat up. I'm gonna put it on like a seven. And then we're gonna add all of our ingredients for the rice pudding in here. So two cups of cooked rice. Four egg yolks. Six tablespoons of sugar. I'm just gonna do a pinch of salt. Is that a quarter teaspoon or so? And then two cups of milk. I'm gonna measure since I have it dirty from my rice anyway. Just to make sure I get the right amount. Oh, that was one and a half. Now let's just top it off. So I got one and a half of home canned and then I just poured half can or half a cup of 1% in there. Let's get this on a medium high heat. You want this to come up slowly. You don't want it too hot too fast or else you'll scramble your eggs. I'm gonna have it like on a six or a five and watch that. And then here's my bananas I got left, my super ripe ones. So I'm gonna do four bananas. Yeah, so I'm gonna use the same spoon for both. And then you just wanna cook these for like five minutes. You wanna get them mashed up. They're gonna cook, get a little sweeter that way, brown up a bit. And then they should be able to be in one giant ball is how you're gonna know you can be able to get it into a ball when it's done. So I'm kind of just going to spread them out, trying to make sure it's evenly coated since we're just going to let this cook, stir in it every once in a while. And then I'm going to come back and focus a little more on my pudding and make sure that it doesn't come up. That was cold milk, so it might take a little bit to reach up to temperature. Those are just from the rice. Yeah, it's just a little piece of the rice. Weird though. You know how sometimes brown rice can have those um, brown or black bits on them? You just pick it out, no big deal. No need to throw away the whole thing. Oh, my house has been smelling like bananas for days. Banana, banana, banana. Hey, can you turn that down a little bit? Whoever's is really loud. Banana, 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 banana. That one's too loud. I can hear it. Just letting this cook, kind of cooking out some of the moisture from it, letting it brown up. It's doing good. All right, these bananas are brown. They have thickened up. They look pretty good, so I'm going to turn them off, and then we're going to go focus on the pudding. You can see we're starting to get some bubblage action over here on the sides. 
So this is when you really want to make sure that you're constantly stirring. It won't take long. All of a sudden it'll just start thickening up on you. Like I feel like this is already a little thicker because you can feel more resistance when you push. That's kind of how you can gauge how it's thickening. Make sure you're scraping the sides. Getting every bit. Should only take about two or three minutes as soon as it starts simmering and getting hot to thicken up. This is one where you kind of got to be patient. You got to watch it. You still got to go low and slow. You can't crank it up. Like you will be rewarded with a very creamy custard if you just go slow, let it thicken up on its own time. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring, just keep stirring, stirring, stirring. Hey, guess what? We stir. So without adding the bananas, this would just be a custard. Ooh, we should add a little bit of vanilla. That would be good. I was going to call it a vanilla custard, but I was like, wait, there's no vanilla in it. I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla just goes great. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. As soon as I added that. Mm -mm. All right. You can see, you see it thickening. Don't mind the dishwasher if you hear it. It's pretty thick. You see how the bubbles, like it's taking more effort for the bubbles to pop. That's because it's having to go through a thicker sauce. So this is done. That's pretty thick. I don't want it to keep boiling or simmering too long. Let's add our bananas. There's our pudding. And I'm gonna put this in a container to cool down. The flatter something is, the faster it'll cool down. Cause you don't wanna put something too hot in the fridge. Oh, it smells delicious. Shall we try it? I think we should. Well, I'm about to get rid of the spoon, might as well. Let's give it a try. Oh my gosh, that is so creamy. So glad I added the vanilla. Oh yeah. All right, so let's get this in the fridge. I am not going to put the lid on it because I want it to cool down as fast as possible. I might even get in there and stir it a couple of times. Okay, in the fridge. And our banana pudding's been in the fridge like this for about 15 minutes. See how nice and creamy that is. You can let this cool down completely if you want. This is still kind of warm. I think I might serve it a little warm. One of the kids gets a big bowl because she's a big kid. Well, that was not that much though. Just because she's a big kid don't mean she gotta get the whole bowl full. There we go. Hmm, I know what it needs. There you go, some delicious banana rice pudding. And that is all the different ways that I ended up preserving those bananas. I ended up getting three quarts of banana chips, so that was great. They are a little chewy, like they get stuck in my teeth. I'm assuming that's normal. They're not as, um, crisp and crunchy, I guess, as store-bought banana chips. So if there's any feedback in what I might have done wrong with that, please let me know. The banana jam turned out really good. I am super happy with that. Like I said, lots of sugar, but it's going to be preserved, that's for sure. And it definitely would be good in like a peanut butter wrap. Mmm, that would be good. Put some banana jam in there. And then we made that banana pudding. Oh, that was so good, guys, especially with that whipped cream on there. 
Mm. And that's just a couple of different ideas of what you could do if you happen to get a case of bananas. I noticed that I also was saying bushel a lot and I meant bunch, like a bushel is like a whole case. So it's just a bunch of bananas is what I meant to say. Sometimes what I'm thinking and what I say just doesn't match. I don't know. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time on Mama Bears.